This is a replacement AC adapter I got for my Apple MacBook Pro uh, about a year ago. And long story short, this was intended to just be a kind of quick drop-in replacement thing to test if the computer even worked because I didn't own an Apple charger at the time. But it ended up being used and it's been sitting connected to a wall for about a year. So I figured I'd, uh, since I've been doing some stuff to my computer, take it to the workshop and break it apart and uh, at least replace the caps in it. But uh, it's a bit of an odd one for these cheap, uh, horrible a eBay AC adapters. It isn't the absolutely cheapest one. It was about $25, I believe. And it certainly shows in that it uh, could have a whole lot less things inside of it, but it's a bit strange. So I've already cracked it open, obviously. And uh, we're immediately met with this thing where we basically just have a couple of very, very thin wires fl flapping around in the breeze. Not too confident in stilling, as well as a fuse that's shrink wrapped, but basically leaning against this piece of heatsink which is connected straight to the negative side of the primary capacitor. Which leads us to the major safety concern with this unit and that's that this piece of shielding is connected to the negative of the uh, output which needs to be electrically isolated from the primary side of course. And that's just separated by this piece of, it's some kind of plastic polymer thing. It basically feels like paper. It would break apart if I were to bend it just a bit too much. And that's all that's sitting between the primary side and the secondary side. Abs <laughs> absolutely lethal. And what's more is that if we remove that, uh, this heatsink is also connected to the negative of the output and this one is still to the input and this one, the primary side one, is just flapping in the breeze basically it's connected to, or it's secured with one solder joint there which is just riveted through doesn't look very confident in installing at all and it's attached through the uh, main switching transistor on the primary there and that's all that's mechanically holding this in place and if we do this, <laughs> it wouldn't take much at all to connect these two. I mean, if you drop the charger too hard, <laughs> that, that, that's a big risk. Uh, anyway, beyond that, uh, there's space for a mains filter. It's just uh, bridged over. It does have an NTC in series with the mains input, so props to the Chinese for actually including that, but it's of course just flapping in the breeze could fall off at any moment proper rectifier, surprisingly and given the circumstance, it, it has a brand name primary capacitor it is an LTEC or Lelon, either which, while they are not known for producing high quality capacitors, they are at least brand names on the secondary we have a slightly swollen whatever that is and it also does have the standard issue capacitor choke capacitor arrangement so there's a choke in here and there's actually another capacitor prior to this probably a 470 or 680 microfarad one this is a one phase in microfarad 125 volts so not too much to complain about there actually save for the horrible quality of this cap which has swollen up due to only about a year of use because it's not entirely ruined yet it's not very heavy duty use either, it's mostly just kept the computer plugged in and in sleep mode. Moving on, the screws they've used for the semiconductors aren't exactly purpose fit and this one holding the secondary rectifier in place isn't very well tightened at all, you can just turn it around however you wish. The primary sound was actually secured though. It does use uh, proper plastic uh, devices, plastic TU220s, on both the primary and secondary side, so 
At least there's not a lot of risk of uh, death through those. And the primary side one seems to be a Fairchild branded device. I can't speak for its genuinity, but it does look somewhat convincing at least. PCB, very thin, about half a normal PCB. But if we move on to the underside, we are presented with a bit of a horror show. Now, from a safety standpoint, the underside of this board is actually somewhat okay. We have reasonable clearance here on the main side, but we do have mains across these two 0603 resistors, which isn't really eh, okay, it should be. Probably a bit more. These are probably not rated to handle mains voltage. Not even two in series. Basically, the clearances for everything is uh, acceptable. I mean, if something blow blows up here, it's just going to explode the fuse anyway, since this is a ungrounded device. And the clearance uh, to the secondary does have an isolation slot there. Uh, is pretty okay. It's up to isolate. It even has a capacitor over there. So. No, no complaints from my side. The transformer, if I've looked uh, inside her, actually seems to have a reasonable amount of uh, uh, isolation between the primary and secondary, and it seems to be adequately sized for the power rating of this adapter, so I suppose that's what you get for your money. But uh, the bad stuff is in the residue. That's left on the board because this looks absolutely crusty and horrible. Everything's just coming off, and the soldering quality is just yeah. None of this is put together right, and there. <laughs> Above all you notice the horrible silver and quality on the output cable because there's a big hole in the solder joint that you can literally see right through. It's just crusty and hand soldered and ugh. The thickness of the traces seems to be okay though. We have positive and negative going there, some sense why that's not used and these are just supposed to go through a coil here which is not populated but probably there are two quite thin jumpers which I'm not entirely sure can handle the current but it hasn't exploded yet a fairly thick nice tin traces for the most part and uh, across the and uh, a lot of SMD components, but yeah, the, the factory where this was made clearly didn't have much of an idea about how to assemble SMD. Well, the casing we can note that the 8 bit voltage is uh, basically whatever, the 8 bit current is basically whatever, and we have our normal array of amusing fake FCC notes, this time talking about interference in this device. Assuming that the rated out Output voltage is actually 18.5 rather than 16.5 volt. Uh, the regulation when pairing a laptop is actually surprisingly good, sticking it around 18.6 to 18.7 at uh, all times. Output ripple, on the other hand, in only half a volt peak to peak, and that's for a 20 megahertz filter on. Uh, removing those. Uh, Removing that reveals all the awful high frequency stuff that this barely filtered thing is putting out across a wide band of frequencies, probably making this an ideal FM and AM radio killer. And a final nail on the coffin. This is the official Apple cable that goes into these chargers. And as you can see, there's a ground connector in there which connects to this part which doesn't connect to anything so am I going to put this thing back in service with some fresh new caps inside? nope 
Thanks for watching. Cheerio.